Google has finally released Google Gemini inside of their top apps. So inside of Gmail, inside of Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, basically all the workspace apps now have Gemini for personal and businesses too. And they are just rolling this out today. So if you don't have access just yet, they usually roll this out gradually to over 150 countries. So watch my preview of it here and you should get access any day now. Let me show you the two different ways you could get access to Gemini because they have a different plan for individual people and then they have a whole different plan for business people. For individual people, you need something called Gemini Advanced. This is a paid subscription. I did cover this in a different video. This is not a new plan, but this gives you access to Ultra, which is the Gemini model that powers Advanced in the regular chatbot, but you also get Gemini inside of Gmail, Docs, and more. So this is the part that is new. It's rolling out to this advanced plan. So if you already have this plan, check out Gmail, see if you have it already. I have it inside of my workspace, which is the second way you could access it. So for business people, people that subscribe to Google Workspace, I'm one of those people, they have plans starting at just $6 for Workspace. So if you're using Workspace, this is the version they also rolled out inside of Workspace, which again gives you access to Docs, Gmail, Slides, which again, individual people also get similar things. This business plan does have some additional things I'll point out. So the Workspace plan for this AI model is called Gemini Business. Again, everything I mentioned here, Gmail, Docs, Sheets, and more. And you also get Gemini 1.0 Ultra. So I'm assuming their most capable model is always gonna be reserved for either the business plan, the enterprise plan, or the advanced plan, which is the paid subscription for individual people. So three different plans going on there. And the enterprise plan is starting at $30 per month. Now, this is based on a one-year commitment. So sometimes they've been pricing things this way. So if you hover over, it says $24 per month. So I'm going to go ahead and get started from here, which I've signed up with a different workspace account. And I've been testing this out for a little bit. So I'll show you here how to sign up from scratch. And one of the big benefits, and I think why a lot of people are going to want to upgrade, is this enterprise-grade security and privacy. So I'll link this page below so you could read more about that if that's one of your concerns. But basically, they're not going to use what you do inside of these models to train their models. So that's a big, big thing when you're using this for business and enterprise. That gives a lot of people hesitation before they use it. So this is really a great update here and obviously the enterprise plan is going to have that and even more things available in the enterprise plan that are not available in the business plan. I'll go ahead and press get started here and it's going to bring you to this page where you need to sign into your Google Workspace account. This requires a previous subscription to Workspace which I mentioned starts at six dollars. If you're not the admin of your Workspace you have to get permission from them or they have to set it up for you but this is the one I set up for myself for my small business. So get more services, Gemini for workspace. And this is right here where I could upgrade. And I'm going to show you this in an actual demo, but if you want to pause here and read through it, this basically tells you all the different things that you get. And the ultra plan looks like it says coming soon. So access to Gemini with ultra. I already have that inside of my personal account with the advanced plan. The advanced plan in the personal account is powered by this, but now it's rolling out to this business plan too. And here's the pricing plan. And it looks like if you just do the month to month and take early advantage of it, it's coming with a little bit of a discount for the first 300 users. Okay, so now we're all set up. Let me show you the demo inside of the different apps that we have access to. So I'll start with Gmail, the one that most people probably use after google.com. And we'll go ahead and click over here and press this little pin icon to help me write. So this is the AI model. This is the Gemini model that now takes place inside of Gmail. Now, by the way, I previously had something called Duet AI that did this exact same thing. The Duet AI is now gone. So everything's going to be called Gemini from this point forward. And here, let me go ahead and type in this prompt. I used this previously inside a regular Gemini. I want to see if I kind of get the same results. I really like what it did on the Gemini website. A colleague has sent you a frustrated email about a delayed project. Draft a reply that acknowledges their frustrations, offer a solution-focused approach, and maintain a professional but reasonable tone. Let's see what we come up with. And I read through this, and I love this tone. It actually doesn't need that much revision here. Obviously, we're not at a point where we could just draft and send without revising, but this requires very little revision here. And down here, you could press recreate or you could refine. So this is inside of Gemini as well. So if this is too casual, 
I want to actually formalize it. Or in this case, maybe it's too short. Let's see what the elaborated version looks like. Okay, he added only one more line this time. And let me just look at the shorter version. Okay, this is pretty short. And if you pause and read any of these, you'll see that it actually sounds a lot more natural and a lot less promotional. And I always found Google went in that direction. Now he has other issues that are covered in different videos. But right now for drafting an email from scratch without any context of what the previous email was, pretty good. Let me now reply to an email. Here, let's just reply to this one where Google is introducing me to Google Gemini. Let me see what a simple prompt does. Reply to this email with no context, nothing. I'm just going to see what it does. Okay, not bad. It took a few seconds. It's thanking Google for the Gemini notification. Again, really professional tone here, but also short enough where you would probably reply to an email like this, maybe even shorter than that. But remember, we have this quick refine option, or if you don't like it, we could recreate. But obviously, make sure you do a little fine tuning. This is kind of a still a giveaway if you're using AI to write the email. I'm getting a ton of emails like this, by the way. So I wanted to mention that just tweak your prompt a little bit, putting a little bit of your tone and style. Now let's look at Google Docs. Okay, my favorite app. I have all my scripts here. Supercharge your writing with Gemini. So let's see what we get here. And we have this new option here right when you open any new doc. So I just have this untitled doc to help me write. If you click or for some reason you don't see it, you could always get this little pen icon here to click on it. Or you could right click and help me write appears this way as well. This is a good use case. Let's see how up to date this is. I'm going to ask it to tell me about Google Gemini business. It basically told me what Google Gemini business plan is, but it got some of the details wrong here because it's kind of blending the regular Gemini, the freemium model here with that pay advanced subscription and some of the things that are inside of Gemini. Look at this prompt, by the way, you shouldn't prompt <laughs> like this. You should give it a lot more context here. So your first draft is actually much more usable. But I always like to test these with just these prompts that have no context. This way, I just kind of get a good idea. I mean, I give it a little bit of context as far as how long. So I said a paragraph, it ignored that completely. So let me see if it could be a little bit more creative. So I'm going to ask for a marketing copy for my e-learning platform skill leap. Let's see what it comes up with. And not bad. It actually formatted it in a pretty legit looking marketing plan with an executive summary target audience. It got the target audience based on the few words I use in my prompt and it flushed it out. And it's accurate. I usually use this prompt because I understand my business more rather than a kind of a fake business. This way I could gauge it pretty quickly. Marketing objective, not bad. A couple of things that it's kind of weird. It came up with a $50,000 marketing budget, but is that monthly, annually? I'm not sure. This lead generation is actually pretty good. So it's done a, not a bad job. I get similar results out of Gemini and ChatGPT outside of Google Doc, but I like this. This one, let me go ahead and insert. There we go. We got ourselves a little template here and we could flush that out. And let me see if I could select text here and refine it. Okay, if I right click, refine the selected text and look at that, I could change the tone I could summarize, I could make it a bullet point. What's this custom one here? Oh, I guess you could type in your own prompt here. Let's see, make it a poem. All right, that's actually not bad as I'm reading through this poem here, kind of long, but pretty cool. So that is awesome. That's actually one of my favorite things so far. The fact that you could select any text, even let's say I wanna select this text, maybe I don't like it as bullet point. Let me right click on it, refine, and let me go ahead and elaborate or actually let's summarize. All right, now we got it into a paragraph. So I could turn bullet points to them paragraph. I could go ahead and refine this even within the generation box before I press insert and I got these options. But a custom prompt box for revisions with selecting that specific text. By the way, so far, this is, has been extremely stable. When I was using Copilot Pro to make a Copilot Pro video, I had a little bit of trouble. So I think that got released a little bit in beta this one so far, not a single problem. Everything has been really smooth so far inside of Gmail and Docs. Let's look at Sheets next. Okay, inside of Google Sheets, by the way, is very limited right now. And it's actually quite hard to find. The first time it took me like 20 minutes to try to find it because there was no clear button I could press to pull up Gemini. And if I selected any columns, nothing happened. So there's this little icon right here. You see that next to menu, help me organize. This is the AI option they have, which is a prompt box here that basically generates custom 
templates for you. So I'll just show you an example here. Anything beyond this is not really possible just yet. I'm assuming this is going to become a big focus once they start really pushing Gemini into Sheets because obviously Sheets is a very powerful tool. So create a personal budget template. You just press create. It works pretty fast. So I'm just not going to edit this to see how long it takes here to create that. Okay, so not bad. Seven seconds maybe. And there we go. We have this template here. Income expenses category. Okay, let me press X. Let's try create a PL template. Okay, not bad. We got the month, revenue, gross profit, net income. Okay, so we got the basic columns here and basic rows here for a PL. And I've had access to this before. This was part of Google Duet AI. So I tested this out, but I really just found this as a good starting point. So right now, I think it's still limited to this help me organize option, creating templates. I haven't found any other options. And that's this little icon. So they're not really pushing it yet inside of Sheets. Well, hopefully this could go a lot further with their new updates. And let's also look at Google Slides for creating presentations. And I'll show you exactly what you could do here. So when you start a new slideshow, let me press X right over here. You'll see a little icon here that you didn't have before, create images with Gemini. So let me press that. Again, the slideshow creation is still very limited. There are plenty of companies that do a whole lot more using AI when it comes to creating slideshows. So far, all I found was you could create Gemini images here and then drop it into your slideshow presentation. Couple of big limitations. If you use anything that says people in it, like create me an image of five people in an office, it will say no, it can't create images of people. Huge limitation of Gemini. It's the same thing on their website. Well, let me just do interior of an office space. And I like this one, add style. So it makes it really easy. You don't have to put that in your prompt. So if you just want a photography, you could choose that and go ahead and create it. And it'll create it here with a few different options. And we got four. So let me select one. And look at the little details though. You see, this doesn't look good at all. The ceiling is completely falling apart. Gemini has quite a long way to go when it comes to image creation. Same with their website, same inside of slides. And I'm sure at some point that's going to change. Now they also roll this out into Google Meets. So if you go to Google Meets and if you click these three dots and apply visual effects, you're going to get this panel here where you could generate backgrounds. Now I like this a whole lot more than what you could do inside of slides because with backgrounds, they could have all kinds of imperfections and it's no big deal. Right. So if you press general background, you're going to get a prompt box. And then you also have that same thing we had inside of slides. But now the imperfections don't cause any issues. So here's a quick prompt luxury office suite in that photography style. Let me go ahead and see. OK, not bad. Again, not good by itself, because if I just was using this, you could see all kinds of different issues with this image that other platforms actually have advanced a little further in. But as a background, not bad at all. So in my initial testing, incredibly stable. I did not come across a single issue, except when it told me it can't create images of people, which I already knew with Gemini. My favorite part was what it was capable of doing inside of Google Docs, inside of Sheets, inside of Slides, very limited, kind of useful inside of Meets, but very useful update. The fact that now we have it inside of our business account too, not just the personal accounts. I think it's going to really take Google to the next level. But I did make a video comparing Google Ultra with GPT-4, the best two models out there right now. I recommend watching that next. And as always, we're going to be the first to release a complete course on this entire suite. So we usually create that on Skill Leap AI, our subscription e-learning platform for AI. We have 21 courses releasing two every single month. So if you want to really excel with AI, that's the place I recommend going. And we made a very affordable and a monthly subscription you could cancel anytime. I hope you found this useful and I'll see you in the next video.